Hi, this is Mike Schmitz, and welcome to another edition of Screencasts Online. In this episode, we'll be taking a look at Bike, a fast and fluid outliner for macOS. Bike combines the powerful but sometimes constraining features of outline tools with the freedom provided by text editors. It's a lightweight application that can handle any size text file with ease, something that can't be said of most outliners, which typically choke on large outlines. In this screencast, we'll demonstrate the difference between the outlining and text editing modes and show how Bike allows you to switch between them with ease. We'll explain the differences between the App Store and direct download versions of the app and the unique pricing strategy that aims to hit the sweet spot between a one-time purchase and a subscription. We'll show you how to use the links to sections of your outline and other applications, demo the Apple script support, and share a bunch of essential shortcuts so you can work with your outlines efficiently without having to take your hands off your keyboard. Let's get started. Bike is available as a free app from the Mac App Store with an in-app subscription. And as long as you have the subscription active, you will have all of the features available to you in Bike. But the way that I would recommend that you buy the application is directly from the developer via their website. So let's close the App Store and go to hogbaysoftware.com where you'll find a list of the applications, including Bike, then click the Learn More and Download button. This takes you to the website for the Bike application, and I love this quote right at the top. This kind of encapsulates the need that Bike is trying to fill. We were promised bicycles for the mind, but we got aircraft carriers instead. And this harkens back to a Steve Jobs quote about the computer being the bicycle for the mind. What Bike intends to do is give you a tool for thought without overwhelming you with a bunch of extra options. And right here, we can either download the application to try it out or click buy now. When you click buy now, you'll be taken to a screen where you can complete your purchase using the paddle service. Now the cost for bike is $29.99 US dollars. And that's actually a one-time cost that gets you a year's worth of updates for the application. After that year, bike will continue to work fully unlocked, but you must renew your license at a discount for updates. And this is an interesting business model that kind of sits right in the middle of all of these different things. It's not an ongoing subscription, so you're not locked into paying for the application in order to keep using it. You only would have to pay again if there's some new features that they added that you want. Personally, it's an outlining application. I really can't think of a whole bunch of new features that they could add that would make me want to spend $30 again, but like they do say on their website, if you do decide to upgrade, you can do so at a discounted rate. You can also download it for free to get started, which does disable some features, but it's still useful for real work. You can open, edit, and save documents and use all of the core editing commands. Not everything we're gonna cover in this tutorial will be available to you, but that unlicensed mode never expires. So that's a great way to get your feet wet if you're not sure if this application is for you. All right, so once you've purchased the application and downloaded it, then open the app to get started. I'm going to resize this window for the purposes of screencasting. And the very first time that you open the application, what you get is an intro message with some links to the homepage, the user's guide, and some handy keyboard shortcuts. I'm gonna delete this. We're actually gonna start from scratch. And the first thing you need to understand about Bike is that there are two different modes primarily that you will be working in. First is the text editing mode and second is the outlining mode. And this is kind of the sweet spot for Bike. There are lots of great text editors out there that don't function very well as outlining tools. There are lots of very powerful outlining tools that don't function very well as a text editor. And the combination of both of those things is what Bike is trying to give you the ability to edit your text as you're creating your outlines, believing that the combination of those two features 
is what is going to allow you to develop and execute on your ideas. So let's start to create our outline. And I'm just gonna jot down a couple of random things so you can see what we can do in terms of the text editing here in Bike. Let's start here with a simple list of things that we need for fancy pour over coffee. Okay, hit enter to create a new row. And now we have the second point in our outline and we can type the next thing that we need. Now an important thing to understand about how outliners work, these two things, because they are aligned the same on the left side here, these are at the same hierarchical level. But we can change a row's indentation by hitting the tab key. Hitting the tab key moves this point underneath the things we need for fancy pour over coffee, which is actually where it belongs. So in addition to premium coffee beans, let's build out the rest of this list. We need a gooseneck kettle, a scale, a good grinder, coffee filters, and the dripper. Okay, next thing we can do is hit enter again, but I want to go back a level, so I want to outdent this next row and we can do that by holding the shift key while we hit tab. This moves it back to the left and let's create a new level here for instructions on making our fancy coffee. All right, so the first thing we need to do is we need to measure out the beans, grind them, heat up the water, Put the coffee in the filter, pour roughly 20 grams of water to let the coffee bloom. Then we pour the rest, and then we serve and enjoy the coffee. Okay, so we've got two main sections here, the things that we need and then the instructions. And clicking on the handles for those rows allows us to collapse and hide everything underneath it. So if we want to hide everything that we need for fancy pour over coffee, just click this handle right here. Same thing with the instructions. And if we want to see it again, we click on those same handles to unhide all of the rows that they contain. Another neat thing we can do here is we can focus on any one of these sections by holding the command key when we click on a row's handle. So if we wanted to just see the instructions, for example, hold the command key, click on this handle, and now we're focused on just that section of our outline. To get back to the entire outline, just hold the command key and click the handle again. Because everything that we're doing in bike right now is primarily text editing though, there are a ton of keyboard shortcuts that are supported and we should go over these briefly. So first of all, you can see the cursor blinking on the line for instructions. I can select that whole word by going to the edit menu, going to selection, and then selecting word. But I can also select that word with the keyboard shortcut, control W. Let's go down a line. We can also select the entire sentence by going to the edit menu and going to selection, select sentence, or using the keyboard shortcut, control S. All of my rows have only a single sentence, but if we had an entire paragraph of text, we could select the entire paragraph by going to edit, selection, select paragraph, or using the keyboard shortcut, shift command L. We can select a branch by going to Edit, Selection, Select Branch, or using the keyboard shortcut, Shift-Command-B. That selects the current row and all the rows that are nested underneath it. We can expand the selection up through the different boundary levels by hitting Command-Option-Up, or contracting the selection by hitting Command-Option-Down. So those are the common selection commands, but there are also a bunch of row commands that you can use in the text editing mode of bike. 
you can insert a row by hitting command return, which is similar to pressing the return key, but the difference here is that inserting a row will insert a new row while pressing return will replace the selection with a new line to create a new row. So if I highlighted enjoy, for example, and hit return, that line completely disappears before creating the new row. So let's hit command Z to undo that. And instead let's hit command return, which keeps the currently selected text and creates a new line. We can delete a row by using the keyboard shortcut Command Shift K, which eliminates the currently selected row and moves the cursor to the previous row. We can duplicate a row by using the keyboard shortcut Command Shift D, and indent or outdent rows by holding Control Command left or right. This is an alternative to the tab-based version of indenting and outdenting and can be handy when you're using the arrow keys to navigate your document. You can use the arrow keys to select the row that you want, then indent or outdent using the previously mentioned shortcuts or move the rows up and down by holding control command up to move the row up and control command down to move the row down. Which one you decide to use is personal preference. And there's actually a third way to indent and outdent by using the command right bracket to indent and command left bracket to outdent. Indent and outdent are very important commands that are used frequently in outliners. So there are multiple ways that you can perform these two commands inside of bike. While you are in text editing mode, these commands work on individual rows and they are not constrained by the outline structure. This may feel a little bit weird if you're coming from an outliner and we're gonna talk about the outlining mode next. So for example, if I go down to this row right here and move this up, it breaks the list of things that were indented underneath the instructions section. It only functions this way inside of the text editing mode, however, and in the outlining mode, it will function exactly as you would expect where all of the things that are underneath a section when you're moving things around like this the whole section gets moved instead. But this is one of the nuances that may feel a little bit weird between text editing mode and outlining mode. Being able to shift back and forth between these in bike gives you a lot of power, but if you don't recognize what mode you're in, it may cause a little bit of confusion because it may not react exactly the way that you expect. All right, so let's put this row back. And actually, let's delete this one to clean up our outline a little bit. All right, now before we get into the outlining view, let's save our document by hitting Command S. We can also go to the file menu and select save, and we'll save this as fancy coffee. We'll keep it on my desktop. And what I wanna show you here is the different file formats that are available inside of Bike. So by default, Bike will use a Bike extension, which is essentially an HTML file. This allows bike files to be opened inside of web browsers. But there are two additional formats that you can use. OPML, which is a very standard format for other outlining applications, and then plain text for .txt. As you can see, everything that I'm doing inside of bike has not had any sort of formatting applied to it, not even markdown formatting, and that is because Bike is a plain text editor. So you're just focused on the outline itself. You don't have the ability to style any of the text, but there are some additional features like links to specific rows that you can use only if you use the Bike format. So I'll use this one for now. Let's click Save. All right, now let's select this instruction section right here and go to the edit menu, go to copy, and there are a couple different options available to us. If I had text selected, I could copy that text using the standard keyboard shortcut Command C. Since I don't have any text selected, that option is grayed out. But I can also copy a link and I can copy a path link. Now these are two different versions of the same thing. Let's copy the link first, and there's a keyboard shortcut associated with this of Shift-Command-C. 
What this does is it creates a link using the bike URL format that will take me straight to this row in this document. So let's open up Safari and I'll show you what this looks like. And let's walk through the three different parts of this. All right, the first part here is bike colon slash slash, which is simply telling the system to open up the bike application. The next part of this is referencing the specific document that we were editing. And then the last part of this is telling it bike which row to put the cursor at. Do we want to allow this page to open bike? We'll allow. And it opens up the document. Now we're back in bike and it's focused on the row that was indicated in that URL. So just like before, if we want to zoom back out, all we have to do is hold the command key while we click on the handle. And then we can see everything in the outline. Now the other version of the link that we can get is the path link. So let's go to the edit menu, select copy and copy path link. And let's jump back over to Safari. Paste this link. And what you'll see here is that instead of a unique identifier, this is actually linking to the place on my Mac hard drive where the file resides. Everything else is the same. Bike colon slash slash says open up the bike folder slash users slash mic slash desktop is indicating the folder that the file is in. Fancy percent sign 20 coffee is just fancy coffee with a URL encoded space in the file name. Dot bike is the extension and pound sign 5H tells it exactly which row to focus on. These are a little bit more fragile than the normal bike links. So for example, if you moved or renamed the link to outline, then this link is going to break. So therefore it's better to use the general bike links, but there's lots of cool things you can do with those. So let's go back here and go to edit, copy and copy link, then go to our task manager. In this case, we'll use things. Go to the inbox, create a new task, and we'll create the task to finish the coffee outline. We can paste the link to the outline, assign a due date and any other metadata that we want. And then once this task is due, our task manager can notify us that this is something that needs to happen. Then we can click to access the link, click on the link, and go straight to that section in our bike outline. Now, as I mentioned before, these links only work when you have a file saved in the .bike format, but there are a couple of other formats of files that you can use in bike. And in fact, you can use bike as a way to view and edit those files, even if it's not the main application that you use for those. For example, I like to use MindNode for a lot of different things, creating mind maps, and then I can export those mind maps via OPML and open those OPML files inside of Bike. So let's do that. Let's open up MindNode. And here I have an outline for a talk that I'm gonna be giving on the five C's of creativity, which I've titled Idea Magic. It's a pretty complex outline, lots of different points. So let's go to the file menu, select export to, and I'll select OPML. Just to create an OPML file here called Idea Magic on my desktop that we can use to demonstrate some of the outlining features. Okay, so we're done with my node. Let's close this now. And we'll open the OPML file that we just created. All right, here's the outline. Let's resize this window. Okay, and you can see we've got a lot more text here. This is gonna be a lot easier to demonstrate some of these outlining features that are available inside of Bike. 
Now to switch to the outlining mode, all we need to do is hit the escape key. When we hit the escape key, instead of a text selection cursor, now we have a highlight on the current row. And once in outlining mode, a lot of the commands are a little bit different. So for example, in outline mode, we can press the up and down key to navigate between the rows. However, when we have a row selected and we hit the left arrow key, we collapse the currently selected row and everything underneath it. So everything underneath what is an idea gets folded up inside of it. And then to expand those collapsed rows, we hit the right arrow key. All of the other row commands that we looked at in the text editing part of this tutorial are gonna work a little bit differently too. They're gonna work on a row and all of the contained rows, not just the individual rows. And some of the movements here are gonna be restricted to the outline structure. So if we have a row that is collapsed here, for example, and I hit the down arrow, I jump over everything that is collapsed inside of that. And if I were to delete this particular row, everything inside of this is going to be deleted. All right, so let's do that. Command Shift K is the keyboard shortcut to delete a row, and that deletes everything underneath that row hierarchically. Let's hit Command Z to bring that back. Just like in text editing mode, we can move rows up and down by hitting control command up or control command down, but this is not gonna move just that row, it's going to move the entire section. So if I move this whole section, it's gonna move it below the value of an idea lies in the using of it. And if I do it again, it's gonna go below the section on where do ideas come from. So in outlining mode, I can very quickly move big parts of my outline around. In fact, if I put this back where it was and go up a level here, let's collapse this row. And we'll just collapse all of these so we get just the major sections here of the presentation. Now I can very quickly move the entire section on create if I wanted to, to come before connect. Now that doesn't actually make any sense in terms of the, the content that I'm gonna be creating, so we'll put that back. And if I were to duplicate any of these, let's hit Command Shift D, it's gonna duplicate everything that is underneath that section. There are, however, a couple of editing commands that will work the same in both modes. So let's go back here, let's create a new row, and we'll type out a name of a new row. By doing so, we've now exited outlining view and gone back into text editing view. So let's hit the escape key to go back into outlining view. And if we hit Option Command G, we actually insert a new group. This takes the currently selected row and puts it inside of another new row. There are a couple other features that we should go over before we wrap up here today. The first is the ability to find things via search. You can search all of the text in your entire outline by hitting Command F. This brings up a search bar at the bottom, which you can use to find everything that matches a search string like idea. By searching for idea, I can see there are 46 different, and by hitting the return key, I can cycle between them. Just like a lot of other text editors, we can replace either a single selection or all selections. And another really cool thing about the search feature in Bike is that it has built-in support for regular expressions. When you're done searching, click the Done button to go back to your outline. The other thing that we should cover is the scriptability that Bike supports. And the easiest way to show this is to open up the built-in script editor that comes with your Mac. create a new script, and I'll just paste in the sample script on the Hogbay website. Now this is not intended to be a tutorial on Apple Script, but just real briefly, what this is doing is it's telling the application bike to make a document with the name testing exclamation point. It's going to delete every row, so it's going to delete all of the welcome text that is in that default message that shows up when you create a new document. 
And then it's gonna make a row with the property of hello and another row below that with the word world. Okay, so let's run this script and see what happens. The script executes and there's a new bike window that appears below the script editor. So let's click on that and we can see here's our hello row and then there's an indented world row just like the script said. This is obviously a very basic example, but if you are really into AppleScript, then there's a lot of really cool things that you can do with bike and you should check out the customizing bike section on the developer's website. And the last thing that we should look at here today is the preferences that come with bike. Go to the bike menu and select preferences or use the keyboard shortcut command comma. And there's just a couple of basic preferences here that we should cover before we go today. First is the appearance. This is the light theme, but if you wanted a dark theme, there's support for that as well. The automatic option switches between light and dark based on the setting for your system. Next, you can choose to check for updates automatically and include preview releases if you want access to the cutting edge features, but these are more beta features, so recognize that the application may not function exactly like you expect. Next is the document section, and this allows us to choose whether we want to see the welcome text whenever we create a new document and select the default type when we save files. So if we don't wanna see that welcome message, all we have to do is uncheck this box, and the default type is set to bike, but if you wanted to choose OPML or plain text, you can do that as well. Just recognize that when you change this from bike, you lose the ability to link to the document and to the specific rows like we covered earlier in this screencast. Next is the editor section, and this is where we can change the foreground and background colors. We can select whether we want a caret to mark the current line, so let's toggle that on. And as you can see now, when I am in text editing mode, there's a background bar throughout the entire row. We can choose the font that we want to use. By default, it's going to use the system font. It's gonna be at 14 points. The line height is 1.3X and the row spacing is 0.0X. You can adjust all of those to your liking here. And then you can choose whether you want to enable the animations and the speed of the animations. I personally like the animations. I feel it gives the application a little bit of whimsy as you're using it. So I leave those toggled on, but if you don't like those, you could turn those off. And then lastly is the license section where you paste the code once you have a license, if you decide to purchase the application for yourself. This is only visible inside of the version of the application that you would get directly from the developer you wouldn't see this in the Mac App Store version. If you're looking for a powerful Mac OS outliner with a little bit more flexibility that is provided by traditional text editors, then you should give Bike a shot. I'm very impressed by the speed of the app and while the lack of text formatting may be a deal breaker for some, I find I don't miss it at all. But that's it for this episode on Bike, We'll be back next week with a new episode of Screencasts Online. See you soon.